the first device that we built to test out the orthogon orthogonal force sensing is a very expensive one. This is a six-axis force sensor that costs about $3,000. And it communicates to the PC, actually uses its own separate card on the PC. And so this was a great tool to actually test out a lot of these algorithms, but it wasn't uh, one that we could imagine ever being marketable. So we experimented with some different, uh, much less expensive methods of orthogonal force sensing, and this is one of the things we came up with. This device actually tests two different mechanisms, and both they rely on deflecting a soft cantilever beam that this motor is mounted on. And in one of them, it's an optical sensor so that this deflection is measured optically. And this side, we have a Hall effect sensor so that uh, the distance from this base position is measured. And the communication actually happens with a serial link which plugs into the back of this board so that you can plug it right into any computer and write a software driver that works pretty well to decode that. This is a demonstration of an invention that we call the haptic clutch. Uh, we began using devices that just have a single degree of freedom, like this one. There's one motor. But we have four sensors mounted orthogonal to this degree of freedom. And we realize that with this kind of a setup, we can simulate this one degree of freedom wheels attachment to an arbitrarily complicated inner model. So in this particular example, we're attaching the outer wheel to a virtual inner wheel that has tooth bumps on the inside of that wheel and on the outside of the virtual wheel. The virtual wheel we simulate uh, in software. So here's how this works. If you press tightly, the two wheels are interlocked and you can advance video frames uh, continuously. This wheel has a little bit of inertia, so you can actually feel its heft as you move back and forth. Now, if you push and then release, you'll notice that this wheel isn't moving, but the video moves forward. That's because the inner virtual wheel is spinning based on our dynamic simulation. Now, if you start to push down and down, you can feel bumps, bumps scrolling by, and if you push hard, you can actually stop the system. Now, if we get it going really fast, it actually takes a fair amount of force to stop this. There we go. So with this kind of interface, we can simulate all of the functions of a normal VCR, play, rewind, fast forward, but we don't have to switch modes. Uh, it's all based on how you touch this device and the intuitive sense of uh, inertia and heft of the inner wheel. This is an invention which we call haptic fisheye views. It's a way of continuously varying the resolution of a haptic display uh, based on applied force or position. In this case, it's your applied force uh, against this wheel. Uh, here's a little diagram that describes this process. Uh, at the top, you're pressing lightly, and at the bottom, you're pressing hard. When you press hard, there's more space between individual ticks. So the way this works here is that pressing lightly, I can advance very rapidly through a videotape and what I'm feeling is a very fine texture. Now, when I start to press with more force, that texture resolves into a series of discrete bumps, so I can advance frame by frame through the video. So instead of having a two-state jog shuttle wheel, I just have a single device that changes its state based on the way that I touch it. So using this, I could rapidly scroll through a video and first find the general scene I'm interested in, uh, but then still managed to find a particular frame. So let's find a frame where Austin jumps into the car here. There we go. It looks like the stunt double might have gotten hurt in that frame. <laughs> 